Well, speaking of marketing strategies, I think we should have a conversation about this new marketing strategy that I've seen working ridiculous right now, which is acting sus. <laughs> right? Literally, that's like, that's like, you, you know, this guy, Aiden Ross? Yeah, of course. He's literally blowing up. What up, guys? Welcome back to the Industry Spotlight podcast. It's your boy, Jackson. Chilling with my boy, Matt. How are you guys and doing today? We're back for episode four. Is it four? I believe it is four. Yes, sir. Hey. <laughs> it's four. We're back in the building, baby. Today we are, it's just me and Matt. We don't have a yep. guest, but um, we're going to bring you some awesome stuff. So let's hop into it. Um, so you said we wanted to talk more about NFTs and how they're you know, going <laughs> to basically dominate the music industry. So you want to yeah, totally. start there? Yeah. So right now, Many artists are realizing that CDs and digital downloads are on the down and streaming is coming up, but that's a problem for them because artists only get 15% revenue from streams as opposed to 50% that they would from digital downloads. So that's a problem. What do you mean by artists getting 15%? They get 15% of the revenue streams, of the other revenue from the from the streams like on spotify and stuff like that interesting so spotify is taking the other percentage so yeah so spotify takes a big percent and the label takes a big percent too i believe okay that's if they're on a label dot what about if yeah. they're independent if they're independent then they they still only get 15 percent. and the rest is going to spotify of the revenue generated yeah interesting where did you find that so I saw that on a BBC article that was just pretty recent, a couple of days ago. Um, it was titled NFTs, are they the future of the music industry? And they said that songwriters earn 15% in streaming. So as opposed to 50% on radio interesting 15 so, yeah. percent of what though like is that the ad revenue generated? Of, of revenues just in general so what does that mean though revenues like the like so for each stream that's that you get on spotify you get like a portion of a cent or mm -hmm. so all the streams accumulated they get 50 percent of that the artist yeah as opposed to like a mechanical stream which is like seven cents i believe or nine cents mechanical stream is like if you buy a vinyl that, that's interesting so that would be like 50 percent. so streaming interesting is, that's crazy that's so yeah, low i know i didn't even realize it was that low like i know obviously that the percentage that you know artists are generating on spotify yeah. are very tiny and they don't start to make a difference obviously until you're in the 50 to 100 thousand monthly listener range like um but that's crazy i didn't realize that spotify's taking 85 percent of that yeah that's wild <laughs> like Ed Sheeran, I saw something like he's like the number one on Spotify mm -hmm. and he's still like, he makes a lot of money obviously on Spotify because he's number yeah. one, but like not as much as you would think. Like he has like 10 songs over a billion streams. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. And you know, that's where NFTs get really interesting because it's allowing us to decentralize the music industry instead of having to rely on a Spotify who determines how much you're worth. You can allow your, you know, fan base to determine what you're worth. Yeah. You know what so, I mean? For example, um, this artist, um, Mike Shinoda, he was able to sell one of his songs as an NFT for $10,000. And he said it's not even close to something you'd be able to get usually just from a song like that. So that's just... 100%. Pretty, yeah. And that, I, I really see Spotify, like obviously you can get residual income from streaming. It's not like that isn't an income stream. But I view Spotify more as a marketing tool. Right, because if you get pushed on their algorithmic playlists, that's going to get your reach to a lot of people. Now, once you have that reach, if you know how to monetize it in other ways, that's where I really think the bag is. Right, like you look at like Travis Scott or like Kanye. Like Kanye doesn't make his money from his music; he makes it from partnering with Gap or launching his own clothing line, or you know, and like Travis Scott, he's making his real money from like Fortnite or like um, you know <laughs> what I mean, like a McDonald's yeah, he makes collab. A lot of money from touring. Yeah, touring too, obviously. I'm just talking about specifically with the music. Like, you yeah. know, it's about building the audience and then you can monetize the audience in a bunch of different ways, right? Yeah, it's and just about leveraging all that. Um, 
what I see like the best way to, you know, generate money from your music is building in a merch add on to it. Right. So like if you can add in another way to monetize it where you can actually get paid, like it, it's way more likely to actually generate income. Right. And that's where NFTs get interesting because it allows you to build that functionality within it. You could build in, you know, all right, not only do you get a copy of my single, but you get a ticket to my show. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's that, like, that would be, that'd be, that's interesting. Do people add that? Do people do that on for NFTs? You can do whatever you want. Right. That's so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's leveraging blockchain, which is a smart contract. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's leveraging blockchain, which is a smart contract, which basically whatever agreement you agree upon, and then it's, you know, basically like verified through, you know, whatever cryptocurrency is using. Verified through, through the blockchain, yeah. Yeah, through the blockchain. So like, for example, there's this guy, Blau, who made like $12 million on, uh, you know, who, who literally selling his album he had already launched like two oh years God. before as an nft and i think part of the reason why it sold so much is because he had additional add-ins so for example i think it was like the top 32 uh people um they get uh exclusive vinyl of the album and um i don't know if it was like the top five or six but a certain percentage also get um like exclusive backstage passes to all of the shows he ever does so wow. someone like him who's playing big shows like EDC, like someone who loves going to those types of shows, that's very, very valuable to him. So how many so how many NFTs did he sell? Like I, I thought I'm people, not hundred percent sure. I thought artists sell I thought it was one NFT they sell. And then, you can do whatever you want, right? Okay. So it's it's really up to you, right? So for example, like Eminem sold an NFT that was like a beat that he produced, mm-hmm. right? And then he did a bid on that one thing. But you can do whatever you want, right? Oh, so you okay. could sell, you could be like, all right, I'm selling ownership in my song. And then you could launch an NFT where, you know, the top 10 people that get it each, you know, like the top 10 bidders each get like 1% of the revenue generated. Oh, that's cool. You could sell ownership of it. Yeah, you could do whatever you so want, it's like, bro. That's a it's thing. It's like equity. You could do that. Yeah, you could do equity in your single right? Like the rights to license it and use it in your content, right? So think about publishing, right? Like you could, instead of selling your single as, you you know, instead of just having someone reach out to you and be like, oh yeah, like, can I use the rights to this? You could have it built in automatically. And it's like, oh, if you want the rights to use this single in, uh, you know, your TV show or your YouTube channel, buy the NFT. And that gives you the rights to use it. And you could build Mm -hmm. that into the contract. And then when this becomes valuable, imagine if you owned a percentage ownership stake in Travis's Travis Scott's new album. Yeah, that's like owning that's like owning stock. Yeah, exactly. that's company, what I was thinking. Right? And, and you can sell that stock to someone else at a higher price. So a lot of people will get an NFTs, not even because they're a fan of that person, but because they believe that it's going to be more valuable in the future. So where that becomes very beneficial for the artist is if the artist, uh, every time another transaction happens with their NFT, so let's say someone buys it, holds it for a year and then resells it. Well, when they resell it, the artist gets 10% of that every single time it's resold. 10%, who decided on 10%? What? That's just the, that's like the, I, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the specifics. It might be different for each platform, but that's what I've heard is like, they get 10% of the resale. Right? Oh, wow. So like it, it creates a residual income for the artist in perpetuity forever. So, yeah. So it benefits both sides. Like the yeah. the investors who are probably maybe don't even listen to this artist, but are just mm-hmm. doing it for financial needs and the artists themselves. Who now gotta- here's the thing. Here's the thing I'm curious about that I think would need to be solved. And maybe the answer is, that it's not and this is just an additional piece but it's like if they can find a way with nfts to create like a platform where you could stream it like spotify and not have to like download it or something that's the part i wonder how that would work because if we could find a way to make them yeah because like they could download it but i'm trying to think about how would they actually then listen to the song like let's say that part of the nft was you got the Mm. song is it just a digital download right because like like I feel like most people aren't going to do that shit. They'd much rather use Spotify where they already listen yeah. to all their music. I feel like the NFT themselves itself, the reason they purchased it wasn't to listen to the song. You know, it was more for mm-hmm. the value of it, which is unless it was like an exclusive song. But, but like you could really listen to any unreleased song anywhere if you try hard enough. 
I mean, you could set this up any way you want. That's the whole thing with the NFTs. It's not like there's one way you have to do it, right? It's just figuring out, it's just a mechanism at which we can provide value for our audience yeah. and monetize our audience, right? So it can be done in a million ways. Like, you know, for example, that, you know, beat Eminem uh, produced and sold as an NFT. Well, the guy that bought it, Tom McDonald, then turned around and used that beat and you know made a song out of it and he has a whole narrative around it like buying that beat is as much for the marketing as it is for the actual like fact that he's doing it and like as a fan that was of Tom mcdonald yeah i've heard of him yeah yeah so he bought that and there's this whole controversy because you know people said he like talked shit on eminem in one of his songs so there's literally like people on reddit like trying to start a GoFundMe to outbid him because they didn't want him on like to get <laughs> the hands of you know eminem's beat that's funny you know what i mean so he Which bought it crazy. like um that reminds me of like the kanye hoopity scoop beat thing <laughs> he oh, kept <laughs> it from drake oh really what yeah. happened there yeah um i remember pierce made a tiktok about this it was like the real reason why uh, Kanye did like the poop diddy scoop lyrics on that beat because Drake thought it was like such a cool beat and he wanted to like make a hit song from it and he was trying to buy it from <laughs> Kanye and Kanye was like no way I'm just gonna like write some dumbass lyrics on this and release it just so to you piss you off with it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's hilarious well speaking of marketing strategies I think we should have a conversation about this new marketing strategy that I've seen working ridiculous right now which is acting sus, <laughs> right? Literally, that's like, that's like, you, you know this guy, Aiden Ross? Yeah, of course. He's literally blowing up right now. That whole video he had where he's like, you know, in the room with Polo G and he's like freestyling. Yeah. But it's not just him doing this shit. Like, Jack Harlow was doing that shit with Drewski and that shit went viral. Uh, like, that's that a big too. part of Jack, Jack Harlow's thing. And it's like, it's crazy how, you know, that content is just like... <laughs> going crazy like literally just acting sus has become yeah. its like own marketing strategy i think it's like the shock factor because like the, these people are just like rapping and then all of a sudden they say some like sus line and obviously had to get a reaction out of the person they're with so the, the fans like eat that shit up because they're like yeah i mean well <laughs> i think there's you know i think there's if we, if we're gonna get real about what i think a lot of it stems from i think you know you look at like you know, like white culture versus black culture, right? Like in black culture, it's like, if you act sus, like that's like a big deal. That's showing you're weak. Whereas like white dudes like to fuck around and act gay because they think it's funny. Right. Right. So I think playing on that dynamic where you see like white dudes acting gay around black guys, it's, you know, it's like those two worlds colliding and people just eat it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, I saw like comments on TikTok like, "Wow, this guy's like brave for doing that." <laughs> it looked like he yeah. wanted to like punch him in the face. Like I saw one. Yeah, I saw the one Apollo G. I saw. Do you know who Zeus and B. Lou are? Mm -mm. They like this um uh, this duo on YouTube who like react to raps and stuff to to music videos, and they got pretty big and they got like the rappers on themselves at the video they're watching with, and um, he did it with them too. And it was mm -hmm. like, I, th I think they're on like his stream like every day now. Yeah. He loses Dude, a rapper himself. Well, it's like you notice like, so th this brings us to like one of the biggest things that I, I realized and why Passion Toolbox grew so much is once you find something that works, you got to lean into it and squeeze everything you can get out of it. Right. Yeah. So what most people do is they just try a bunch of shit. They're all over the place. And that's why their audience never grows is because people don't know what to expect from them. They don't know why they should care. Right. Because they don't know what they're doing. So every day they're trying some new shit and people that are following them are like, I don't know what to expect from you. So I don't really care. Whereas once you find something that works, you got to lean into that heavy because you can get momentum from that. Right. And you, you see that with Aiden, right? Like if you look at all of his videos, it's all about him acting sus in like every single video. So that's his whole shtick. Yeah. Right. And since it's working, he's leaning into it with a bunch of different rappers doing it over and over again because he knows it's going to get clicks and it's going to work. Just like on Passion yeah. Toolbox, we know t talking about artists and teaching a lesson from their stories works. So we do a bunch of videos like that and we get a repeatable result. When you look at all the content of ours that flops, it's always the content that isn't that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? But I wonder you know, if um, 
<laughs> Excuse me. I wonder if Aiden is consciously, um, you know, like acting like this because he knows no, it's going to get. No, he is. Yeah. No, he's doing that because he knows it's going to get clicks. Uh, yeah. That. I mean, now totally. I wonder how he found that out, or if that was just like his personality to just like say something. I mean, like I think. I mean, I'm sure that's just his personality. I don't really know his content from b before Polo G, but it was because of that Polo G shit. Yeah. That Polo I, G shit went viral, and then that's what he's known for is being the dude that just like yeah. fucks with rappers by acting sus. So he's leaning into that strategy. I don't know if this is the same guy, but I think he used to play um, NBA 2K on Twitch with Bronny, LeBron's son. Yeah, that's him. That's him? Okay. Yeah. So I... I remember watching a brownie stream and he was on it like over the summer and I thought this mm -hmm. kid was like really annoying. <laughs> but, oh, really? Like, now he's like huge. <laughs> yeah, he blew up. It's crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, man. And that that's the whole thing, right? It's like, I think one of the big things that opened my eyes is once I started noticing patterns when it comes to virality, right? And when you understand what to look for, you can see these patterns within content creators. And what this pattern is, is, you know, they're using various strategies to get their content to blow. And then when they find a strategy that works, they lean into that over and over and over again. So when you're looking at um, content creators that are big, look for those patterns. Like ask yourself, what are these guys doing over and over again that's consistent, like consistent patterns throughout all their content? Yeah. And you can literally reverse engineer their strategies and then implement them within your own strategy. I've seen that just like, so, because I did that too. I used to do that yeah. too, just like going hard at one thing. Yeah. So I see that now in a lot of just TikToks, TikTok um, users, you know, doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's it's effective. It's very effective. Yeah. No, think, like a, perf a perfect example of someone who's done that amazing is, uh, you know, T. Oggs. Yeah. So I, I realized this with his, like I, I've, I was studying his channel. I realized what his pattern is, which is he takes a sound that's going viral. He samples that in a beat. He remixes it and turns it into a banger, leverages the virality of that sound already, makes a bunch of videos memeing that sound to get it traction. Mm -hmm. And then he rinses, rinses and repeats that strategy. And from that, he's gotten like eight songs to go viral. Yeah. Because that strategy just works amazing. So he's just leaned into it and he's been able to build an entire career off of it. And now that he's built that audience and he's built that attention, now he's going to start, you know, like touring. And, you know, I was actually on his live talking to him and he was saying that like, yeah, you know, I do make a lot of these viral songs to get the attention, but he's also working on a completely different, you know, set of music that isn't using any of that now that he has the attention and he has a platform to promote actual music to. Yeah, that's, that's the next step. And that's, we'll see how he handles with that. But I think that's very important um, to, to, you know, cause I feel like there's this stigma, like TikTok artists, like TikTok musicians, but, but that's that's like everything, bro. There's yeah. a stigma behind all these platforms. YouTube, look at YouTube, right? Now it's just, it's anyone that has a stigma of like, oh, they're just an artist on TikTok or oh, they're just a YouTuber. Like, get with the fucking times. Look at the metrics. People yeah. on TikTok are getting more than cable television. It's true. Like, it's, so, it's so accessible. A girl in her bedroom fucking dancing to music is getting more views than an entire network. <laughs> like, think about that. For the a Super Bowl, I think, honestly. And we're sitting here <laughs> saying, oh, she's just a TikToker. Well, it's like, well, where's the attention? Where's the demand? The demand is in the social media platforms. So if you're just passing this off, well, you're getting left behind. Right? Yeah. Like, if you don't get with the times, you're going to be left behind. Just because that's how things used to be, that doesn't mean that's how they are now. And the people that will be successful in the 21st century aren't the ones that learn information the best. It's the ones that can learn, unlearn, and relearn. We're in a, you know ecosystem where things are constantly adapting. And if you can't keep up, you're going to get left behind. Like if you're sitting here like relying on Facebook pages to grow your audience, well, that was a great strategy in 2011. Yeah. <laughs> people became millionaires from that. Doesn't people, mean it's I know people who still do like, like a magazine plugins to try and get like uh streams 
like musicians like try and get on like news articles and stuff still <laughs> like it's not gonna work well like i was talking to this uh this guy bryson beats he's like this 13 year old producer he's about to be on uh like the local news like they came to do a little story on him yeah and I, we were talking about it. it's like bro he's gonna get more views posting about the fact that he was on the news on tiktok than he is from the actual news yeah <laughs> Like, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Like, because it goes back to that stigma that people think TikTok isn't like big. Yeah. So, when people see the news, because they think it's even bigger, on when people see the news on TikTok, they're like, oh, that's big. That's huge. He was on the news, not realizing that TikTok is even bigger. Like, what they're doing for him by saying, oh, he's on the news is huge, is even bigger than him actually being on the news. Yeah. It's like, I think people, when we have like, infrastructures that have been around for decades it's easy to just say those are you know what traditionally was considered the platforms that like it's easy to look at those as like oh that's what i'm supposed to be doing but it's like all right like new like cable television is becoming the new radio yeah. right like the internet has taken over no one like literally gen z it's like they look at you weird if you own a tv nowadays you know what i mean <laughs> like or like uh, look if you at own me, a tv it doesn't have a amazon dude, virus i literally have a fat ass tv right here right yeah. you know what i do i lay in my bed and i just chill on my laptop i don't even use it right, right. <laughs> it's like we don't even need them anymore Unless you know. have an Amazon Fire Stick, then you could use it. <laughs> Did I mess it up? All right. Now you're good. Now you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, so it's like, yeah, you got to keep up with the times. And you see this in the music industry too. Like, you know, what are people doing? Oh, like, I'm going to spend all this money on a music video or I'm going to get a press release. And it's like, bro, we're not living in 2008 anymore. It's yeah. 2021. When was the last, let me ask you, when was the last time you learned about an artist? that you fuck with heavy right now from a blog article? I never, never. <laughs> never, right? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you saw an artist you've never heard of before who has 200 subscribers on YouTube drop a music video and you're like, ooh, I gotta check this out. Yeah, no, never. <laughs> Literally never. But why do we do that? Because that's how it used to work. You used to get a music video because you're trying to get on MTV. Yeah. Right? You used to get a blog article because that was like the early social media, <laughs> right? Yeah. So people are going, oh, this is how it used to work. Like I got to get in there, but cause they don't know any better, right? They're learning from people that like had that work for them. Like, you know, that's how I believe Tyler, the creator and like uh, their whole squad blew up was like, uh, it was like Tumblr and blog articles and stuff. So the it was odd like, future? Yeah. They blew up on um, Tumblr and stuff like that? Yeah, it was like Tumblr. And then I think they got spread through a bunch of blogs and stuff, but that oh, was that's... like, that was like 2012, 2011, you know? Yeah. So it's 2021 now. Like, it's a different game. And now the game is TikTok. Literally yeah. TikTok. Like, I went to, um, I went to like a jazz game, like a basketball game, right? And then I'm chilling in this arena and literally they're like playing a bunch of like music and it was all good. And then I was realizing every single song they played, I learned about it from TikTok. When, when did you go to this game? Like a couple weeks ago okay that was all from tiktok literally every song they were playing was just like literally it was like the top viral s trending sounds on tiktok it was crazy yeah totally because that's the bill if you look at the billboard that's what it is i could guarantee if i if i look up billboard yeah. 100 right now it's all gonna be 100 percent, 100 percent. so it's like it, it's cool because it's giving us the power right you have the ability to build your own platform like you don't need anyone you just need to stay consistent with putting out content and like shit you never know bro yeah but you know i think where like, artists fuck up is they they make their content very selfish right they're saying hey look at me here's why you should help me here's why i'm the shit and so no one gives a fuck because there's like i i've seen a hundred other people do the exact same thing like you got to bring value to them yeah to the, your audience <laughs> if you want people to care mm -hmm. you can't make it about yourself because people are just like people care about themselves more than you obviously so yeah gonna... and also there's a hundred other people trying to make it about themselves too yeah so when we see someone saying hey check out my new single out now on all platforms click the link in the bot we already we've heard that a million times we're numb to it we're gonna one flick of our finger and you're out of our lives forever yeah
You know what I mean? So it's like you got to bring something of value to the table. And the easiest way to bring something value is to make it about them, not about yourself. But if you get that shit that hits, it can change your life overnight. Shit, look at that. Like you see this thing happen with the uh, like Adrian's kickback. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have like, no do, idea. was there like an initial post? It was like it went. Vi- I don't even know why there it was, went viral. Actually, uh, there was an initial post by Adrian himself or mm-hmm. something. Yeah, and then it just it like caught fire so quickly. Yeah, and just like everyone pulled up there. <laughs> yeah, it's like the compound. I don't know. If, like when something starts getting traction, people fuck with it because it has traction. Right, like we we evolved to be in tribes of 150 people, right? So naturally, what? 150 people. Yeah. So naturally, humans, when we were first like evolving, we were evolved to be in tribes of 150 people, right? So what happened was, you know, if you got excommunicated from that tribe, that pretty much meant death, right? Mm -hmm. tribes meant survival so how our brains evolved is to do what the tribe wants whatever the tribe thinks believes is interested in we follow that because if we don't if we do something outside of the tribe that's contrary to what You need to know about it and be a part of it or else that's you going outside of your tribe. So if you show up and you see something that you're late to the party on that is like going crazy. Naturally, we gravitate towards it yeah, because that an, meant that leads to our survival. People have an you know innate, I mean? uh, innate like, feeling to just gravitate towards that. Yeah. Yeah. Towards herd mentality, right? Whatever our tribe believes, does, thinks I do the same because that means that, you know, they're going to support and accept. And I think that's the backbone towards trends. That's know? literally what it is. Yeah. Right? I got to get on the latest trend, right? Because if you're not, you're getting left behind. And we, we're not about getting left behind because we want to survive, grow, and prosper. Yeah. Right? So it's like marketing, all marketing is, is leveraging human psychology. If you understand, like, the psychology behind building and creating relationships – you can reverse engineer that into your content strategy and literally build over time a community of people that like love you and trust you and will do anything for you to support you because they align with you. You know what I mean? And they, they want to feel that dopamine rush they get from finding people that they believe in and connect with and that bring them value. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that just come. TikTok is... Um probably the best the most like intimate platform you could do that on because i see people sorry go ahead i i see people like forming relationships in the comments just like not even forming relationships but like acting like you know they are they have like a strong relationship like just like supporting each other just like strangers and that's that's something social media um is like something new in social media I, i feel like on tiktok you know what I think that the pandemic did is I, I think it was the tipping point that turned online relationships to being viewed the same as in-person relationships. Think yeah. about this, bro. Well, Every member of Passion Toolbox, we have what, 10, 11 members, except for me meeting up with Mozart. None of us have ever met in person. Yeah. Well, so you never saw, you never met Pierce? No, I, I still haven't met Pierce in person. Wow. Right? Like, think about that, bro. Like, literally none of us have ever met in person. Like, some of my best friends over the last three to four years are on the other side of the country. Yeah. I I have a personal experience with that, too. Like, my girlfriend, we didn't even meet yeah. until, like, we decided, we, like, got in a relationship before even meeting. <laughs> Let's be honest, bro. You guys meet on FarmersOnly.com? <laughs> No, nah. <laughs> we met through um, our college. We go to the same college, so there was like an Instagram page, 
that was hey, like showcasing <laughs> each other and yeah. she saw my post and added me on snapchat from that oh there you go bro so, yeah. i see what's up let's get it <laughs> so, yeah so, no yeah. it's it's weird how that works like look with tinder bro oh yeah like tinder did it too like it like it used to be weird like it used to be um you used to be embarrassed to be on tinder like yeah. i don't know if with you like with your age because like i grew up slightly before like i grew up when tinder started like i was i was 16 17 when tinder was like first started yeah so for me like it was still a little weird but now it's just it's logically what everyone does <laughs> you know i remember in high school like yeah. being like oh did you see so-and-so's on tinder like it's like that's weird because <laughs> like yeah. well first of all you had to be 18 so people yeah. would obviously be faking their age yeah that's and, sketch <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah be like, careful nowadays <laughs> yeah a couple, a couple of my friends are like labeled as 20 on tinder when they're 18 <laughs> so yeah bro it's it you know, it's crazy too is like you know like girls are like 14 trying to look like kendall jenner and you have girls that are like 35 trying to look like kendall jenner and they're just like reconstructing their entire face with like makeup <laughs> so you look at girls sometimes and i'm like i legitimately don't know if you're 15 or 30. yeah i right? see that so, too <laughs> it's crazy bro like the, i um, see like these like youtube videos where it's like guess if they're 15 or 20. yeah yeah or it's, like it's yo, you know that chick that's like jacked on TikTok, on TikTok that goes yeah, viral. yeah and like she, she does the videos where she like punches and like yeah. someone like hits the frame. <laughs> you no know she just turned 15. yeah i know it's crazy i legitimately thought she was like 25. yeah <laughs> right and like everyone oh, in the comments the like you're 15. the yeah. muscles <laughs> yeah she bro she's more jacked than me dog <laughs> like, yeah. i'm 24 i'm about to turn 25. like what is this bullshit? <laughs> you know what i mean like it's crazy yeah i, I see like um people slowly are like becoming what the Disney actors in high school actually looked like in high school, <laughs> you know, like oh, yeah. those Disney <laughs> movies, like the yeah. high schoolers look like they're 25. I feel like they just look slowly to actually starting to look like that. <laughs> yeah. No, Not in my high school though. My seniors. Well, I think, so I think what it is is younger people have social media accounts. So they right. see what's like popular in pop culture and then they emulate it. Yeah, I've always thought social media is shortening new the new generation childhood. Like, oh yeah, hundred percent. You're like, you, it's like thirteen trying to like build a career, <laughs> and it's like yeah. you're not not even like experiencing like, life. Like that, and like these twelve year olds I see on like TikTok saying how like they're so depressed and stuff, and I feel like they get like 100%. or eleven year olds. I feel like TikTok can be so toxic with that. Oh, social media, a hundred percent. Because what, itself, what happens yeah. is we're sold this idea that like we need to live this perfect, crazy, over the top 1% life. And we're curated all that content. Everyone's showing us their highlight reel. So it gives us yeah. an unrealistic expectation of what life is. And I even fall in this trap, bro. Yes. Yeah, like I fell in that, I fell, I fell in this trap with building passion toolbox. You know, like I went through a hard couple of weeks and it's like, you know, I'm just talking with my parents and they're like, why do you feel the need to be a fucking millionaire at 24? Like when I was 24, we were out enjoying our lives and we weren't worried about making money. We were just out there like enjoying our youth. Yeah. And it makes you really question like, why do I want to be successful? Is it because social media is programming me to try and live that? Is it because it's what I actually want? And it, yeah. it becomes very murky. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like understanding, like what are my actual intentions behind this? Which is actually why I'm doing this content series this summer, right? So basically, you know, I'll go over it with you because anyone listening probably hasn't heard about it. But mm -hmm. basically this summer, I'm going to be doing a content series where I make a song with someone from every single state. Yeah. And I'm either going to be converting a bus or an RV into a studio space that I use for school this. Bus, right? Yeah, so I'm thinking school bus um just from a marketing perspective right but logistically it's going to be a huge challenge versus like yeah. renovating an rv yeah. right so you know i'd love to get your opinion on this because like he here's my thought process right like coming back to that idea we talked about about like studying creators and like what are their strategies to becoming successful 
I've been doing a lot of research recently into YouTubers and like, I, you know, I look at someone like Eric who grew from like zero to a million subscribers in one year or someone like Mr. Beast. Who's at like, what, like 72 million subscribers or some yeah, stupid so like, that. like that. <laughs> like, and I'm looking at what are their strategies? Like what is working so well for them? How did they get this to work? And here's what I realized they do. They come up with a crazy title and thumbnail as their concept for the video, something they know that people are going to click on. Then they reverse engineer executing on that video. Whereas what most people are doing is they're making a video and then they try to come up with the title and thumbnail. Do you see the difference there? Yeah, yeah. So like, and this was the mistake I was making. I, I, you know, I'd just be like making some content and then be like, how could I get people to want to click on this? When in reality, you got to begin with that end in mind because your video is completely irrelevant if someone doesn't see it. So if you don't have the ability to get someone to see it, that's 90% of the equation. And if your title and thumbnail is strong enough and enticing enough, someone will stick around, right? So my thought process is, you know, I want to do this, you know, I, I, I don't want to just make a song with an artist from every state. That is a great, you know, potential title and thumbnail. Mm -hmm. But with each state, I can't just be like, the same title in every video. And now I'm in Arizona. Now I'm in New Mexico. Like, yeah. people aren't gonna shit because they don't know who I am. Why do they care that I'm making a song in Arizona? Yeah, you can't just be like, oh, making a song in every country. I mean, every state yeah. series, episode number two. Like yeah, that. now I can do that within the video. Yeah. Maybe just like a slide where I'm like, all right, we're on state 27. Today we're in New Mexico. Right? Right. But specifically with getting the title go viral, I got to have some crazy shit in the title and the thumbnail. So how can I create that differentiation factor? How can I do something different? Well, building a school bus into a studio, that's some different shit. Yeah. Also, when I do that, it's going to be easier to network. It's going to be easier to get people that have a following to come be in my content. Why? Because they can leverage the dif the differentiation factor that I'm providing. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I went with an RV, it might work too, but I'm I'd have to do some like crazy mods on that RV, maybe yeah. like some crazy paint job. Or I'm thinking like, how could I like, if I were to go the RV route, how could I do it in a way that would get people like, oh, wow, I got to be a part of that. Yeah. Um, like, what do you think? I feel like having like a cool wrap on the RV. I don't know if you could be able to do that, but like, I'd probably you know paint what I mean? it because my yeah, mom's like, actually like my mom's actually like a like a painter and shit. Like, she's yeah, been, I saw that. Yeah, she's saw been like hired to do like full on mural jobs, like wow. at cafes where it's the entire wall and stuff. Yeah, right. That's awesome. Or like offices where they like have her make like a whole like you know. So we could we're probably gonna paint it whether it's a school bus. And like make it some crazy thing on the outside. Do you know what I was also thinking I could do though? Is get maybe some sponsors. Where I yeah. could be like, uh, like we'll slap on your the... fat ass logo on the back of our bus. <laughs> yeah. we're driving, not only are we doing a content series, but we're driving around the country. So when people are driving, it's going to be an advertisement across the whole country. Like I, I bet I could, I'm, I'm going to look into lining up a, some sort of sponsor for you that. You could totally do that, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Could promote the um, podcast on it too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to figure out, right? Like if I'm gonna and, and here's the other thing where it gets a little sketchy with a bus is I don't want to break down in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, what I mean I'm really worried I'm gonna get some bus and then I'm gonna break down in the middle of nowhere and they're gonna be like, Oh, this part of your engine is broke. It's gonna be eight thousand dollars to fix it. Yeah. And then I'm just eight thousand dollars in the hole. Whereas like I feel like with an RIV, yeah, an RV, a, it might be. Yeah. I don't know. Insurance on a bus. <laughs> yeah. The other issue is I don't know shit about electric hardware, cars, vehicles. Yeah. I don't know anything about any of this stuff. But it's also part of the challenge and part of the fun, right? Um, yeah. I think, you know, if it's done right, you know, I think it could be very beneficial. And not just that, but like, and why I think the bus route might be the move is after the entire trip, I could park it in a high traffic area and rent it out as an Airbnb. Yeah. That's right. So talking. I'm looking at that and I'm like, all right, this actually makes sense. I think I, this could be viable. And I think that the marketing aspect of it could be worth it being a bus. It's just dealing with the understanding that you're signing up for a lot 
when it comes with this. Yeah, things are gonna a... go wrong. It's it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm, it's more for the like the the journey and the adventure, and that's that's the fun part about it. Just yeah, and that's that's like where that with where no... I look at like. So go ahead. With well, like with no um with no fallback. Yeah. yeah, just fully committing. But here's the other thing too. I thought about. Let's say I end up dropping. Let's just say hypothetically, you know, because uh, I'm going to sell my car to fund it. But like, let's say I end up dropping. I I, I get like a ten grand loan for it, mm -hmm. right? Well, shit, bro. I'm paying nine hundred bucks to live where I am, anyways. If I put nine hundred to a thousand dollars a month into paying off my loan, it's just basically transferring my rent from playing a you know going towards something i don't own to you know putting my money into a cash producing asset mm -hmm. plus that is you know since it's part of my business that becomes a business uh that becomes a tax write-off yeah you know what i mean so it makes a lot of sense to me i'm definitely going to commit and send it plus i'm you know i'm 24 i don't want to live in portland anymore my lease is up in july and like I'm single now, so it's like I literally have no ties to anything. If I'm gonna do it, now's the time, right? Yeah. And True. what I'm what I'm thinking with each state, like I was mentioning, right, is it's like I can't just show up and be like making a song in Arizona, right? Like I got to <laughs> do some shit that stands out, right? So what I'm gonna try and do within each state is um is find some like clickbaity ass shit to do. Yeah. Right. Like. Sky, you know, like whatever, like hanging out, like zip lining from a bat cave or something, like like some <laughs> shit that people would actually want to click on that video. Yeah, and, and like find some I, random yeah. shit to do in that in that stage. In that series, right? I think it's real what it really comes about in this content and you know, looking at like talking about patterns and who to like emulate is I look at someone like why was David Dobrik's content so successful? It's because he's just hitting you with a four minute and 20 second dopamine rush. Yeah, it's just not. He goes and he films a bunch of different shit and then he just builds a collage into the video. So I think I'm going to go a similar style where I'm not just showing me like meeting up with the artist and making a banger, but I'm like, all right, it cuts to me like, like I have a friend, she uh, lives in California out in like, uh at this like animal like zoo resort so it's like maybe i could get her to go behind the scenes and there's like a scene of me like feeding a watermelon to a hippo <laughs> or some <laughs> shit. you know what i mean like i gotta yeah. do some shit that like i can i gotta begin with the title and thumbnail first you know mm -hmm. what i mean and i think that's what's gonna build this because you know what i'm realizing more and more is it's like if you want to stand out from all these musicians bro there's sixty thousand songs uploaded a day like you gotta build a narrative and get people emotionally invested in your music mm -hmm. from your content. So your content strategy builds that interest in your music. Then once you have that interest, now the quality of your music will allow people to want to come back for more. But yeah. you can't rely on the quality of music to get people interested because yeah, all right, your song is good, but so are the other, you know, 50,000 people that uploaded a song. Yeah. Like popularity and quality of of song shouldn't be on like the same graph. They're not they're not direct on like the, if X is popularity, Y is like quality. It it wouldn't be a straight line because that's just not how it is. Like there's so many good artists that like for example when we did the live streams on TikTok when I would listen to people's songs, mm -hmm. some people would have some really good songs on there and it would be like under a thousand streams, like songs that would be better than like many songs on the Billboard. Like like Astronaut in the Ocean, that, that does yeah. not deserve to be top 10 billboard. Yeah. But of course it is because that's just how it goes nowadays. So Yeah, you're giving people context behind the song. Why is that yeah. song crazy? Because people have a reason to care about it. They see it in all these memes. Yeah. And Right? You've created an interest outside of the actual song itself. That song going viral has nothing to do with the quality of, of right. the song. It's just literally that it got turned into a meme. Mm-hmm. And I, but but so like continuing with that, I feel like a lot of artists do believe that the graph is direct, so they make a song with that in mind. That if oh if they just make this amazing song, don't even you know put too much marketing on it or or effort into it. Uh, after the fact of making it, then it's gonna like blow up. But it's just not how it works. So it's all about getting that first step, and to get that, you have to do something crazy like what you're gonna do with the you know, making a song with. Yeah. 
you have to do speak. something different. <clears throat> yeah. Right? You can't do the same thing everyone else is doing and expect a different result. How do you, how are you going to be part of the 1% of the 1% if you're doing what the 99.9% .9 are doing? Exactly. Yeah. Right? Like people that, just think they're yeah. different. People think they're built different. <laughs> yeah. But they, or they see the person <laughs> that gets lucky. You know what I mean? And they think, yeah. I'm going to be that person. It's like, all right, that's like, that's like putting buying a, a lot of <laughs> Yeah, it's like buying a lottery ticket as your, you know, investment strategy. Yeah. It's like, all right. And you, you know, you could be like, well, bro, look at these people. It worked for them. It's like, all right, but look at the 99.9% .9 of people that lost their money. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly. where it's like, um, you know, that's what I'm really, you know, realizing more and more is it's like, you got to build that narrative around it and find a way to do it in a way that like works for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone has their own story. Um, and people love the story behind it. That's why those, those TikToks where it's like, uh, the, the hook action call to, um, yeah, hook story call to action, hook story call to action format works so well. Cause, yeah. um, you're yeah, able to create a story. narrative around your music. You're getting people, you know, you hook them in by saying some shit that's going to get them to pay attention. You tell a story about your song, which gives them context. And then you ask them to stream it. Yeah. Right. And which gets them to actually go listen to it. Yeah. And this is not like the, um, the, oh, my manager's going to fire me if you don't stream my song. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> it's so like, the, I'll give uh, an example. Cause people yeah. are probably like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. right yeah. Let's say you're releasing a song and you're like, and your song's about like getting broken up with, right? What do most artists do? Yo, my song Heartbreak out now on all platforms, link in bio, run it up. Well, cool, bro. I don't know who the fuck you are, so I don't give a fuck that you're releasing a song. <laughs> and I just saw 10 other artists do that shit. So you know what I'm going to do? The moment I see you go, yo, what's up, guys? I already know what you're about to fucking say. I don't give a shit. So I'm scrolling past your video, which means your watch time from me is going to be 0.7 seconds. That's going to bring your overall watch time down, which means TikTok not going to trust your content and they're not going to push it out to people. But if instead you start with your hook, my girlfriend cheated on me with my best friend. Now I'm like, wait, what? That is something that has caught my attention. So now I'm going to stick around to hear you out. Where are you going with this? All right? You tell some story about how your girlfriend cheated on you with your best friend and it broke your heart and you decided to start making music as your therapy. And then you wrote this song and it's a banger and you're, and it, you know, helped you get over that, you know, stressful time. And then call to action. Here's where people fuck up. They go, oh, so go check out my music because I'm the shit, right? They're making their call to action selfish. I feel like with the call to action, if you can make it about the end user and why it will benefit them, they're way more likely to do it. So instead of being like, so go stream my song out now on all platforms, you'd be like, this song, so if anyone out there is going through a breakup, I wrote this song, it's going to help you get through it. So if you're going through a hard time, click the link in my bio and check out the song. Yeah, you link, you link it back to them in the end. Right, you're making it about them. They're way more likely to do it if it benefits them. But here's the thing you're also doing. People that aren't going through a rough breakup, they might just be curious about the song now because they want to see if, oh, would this help me in the future? Or, yeah. oh, I've been through a bad breakup. I can relate to this. I want to hear what his song's like. You're giving them context. You're giving them a reason to care. You're building that narrative around your song. Now they're way more likely to vibe with you. And more importantly, it actually leads to them streaming your music, right? I think what happens with a lot of people is they start posting on TikTok and then they get views doing something like a comedy sketch or like some other type of content that isn't them as a musician. And then what happens is they turn into a TikTok influencer instead of a musician because they get caught chasing those views and followers. When in reality, at the end of the day, none of that's leading back to what they actually want to do, which is music, because no one's going to stream their song. Yeah, I see that with a lot of art, with a lot of TikTokers. Um, I know some, I won't like name any, but. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you just no. got to ask yourself, am I trying to be an influencer or a musician? Because yeah. you got to begin with the end of mind about what you're trying to accomplish here. And shit, bro, I'm not going to lie, like the influencer part isn't part of it now. Right. You almost can't be a musician now. You got to be an influencer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if you don't have something that leads back to people streaming your music and you're not focused on growing those metrics, you're going to move more and more away from it. <laughs> I can <Yeah>. take that. <laughs> I can tell you that from personal experience. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So,
Yeah, I think it's just important to begin about the end in mind about what am I actually trying to do here? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's and why it's... providing value for the actual consumer, not making it about yourself. Yeah. It's important to have not per se, not necessarily, necessarily an end goal, but just like a vision of what you want. This no, you do need to. an end goal. You, you think so? Because how do you know where to go? Yeah. If you don't know where you're trying, like, how do you know what to do well, if you don't know where you're trying to go? Yeah, that's true. Um, I feel like sometimes the end goal can be like demotivating sometimes because like, oh, that's so that's so big, that's so far away. So a lot of people like would break it up into smaller goals, but still have that in mind, I guess. No, I mean, if you know you're going to California and you know the exact location, your GPS is going to break it up into smaller goals. Turn right on Second Street. Take a left on, you know main avenue and then get on the freeway right like it's gonna break it up and yeah. i feel like where people mess up is they think they need their end goal to be happy when they don't realize that the happiness comes from chasing that goal not actually accomplishing it. yeah right mm -hmm. and i fall into this too right you get so focused on the end goal that you become demoralized because all you see is the gap right but that's where I think it's important to ask yourself, why do I want that end goal? Right? And if you're too focused on the gap, it's probably because you want that end goal for the wrong reasons, which is you want to impress someone, you know, you want to do something that feeds your ego, right? And if you're doing this to feed your ego, like it's a losing battle because it's never going to be enough. Yeah. <laughs> ego always wants more. Oh, cool. I made a, you know, a million. Now I need to make 5 million. Oh, I made 5 million. Now I need to make 50 million. You know, oh, I made 50. Now I need to make a hundred and it's never going to be enough. And that's why you see a lot of these artists overdose is because they use this to fill the void inside of them that doesn't get filled. So then they rely on drugs to numb themselves. And then that gets out of hand. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas like, if you can build it around the right reasons and making an impact or something that actually is like healthy then you're not worried about the end goal. You just fall in love with the process of, you know, chasing it. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that. Um, the, the values you have around being a musician, you know, like what you want result in how you'll end up, I guess. That's the thing, right? Because here's the thing is we chase the fame because we think that it'll make people fuck with us more. I'll tell you right now, no one gives a fuck. Yeah. And when you rely on fame as a way to get people to like and respect you, it's actually very empty because they want something from you. Now, all of a sudden, you have people around you and like, even if they're supporting you, you start questioning why. And if it's for a valid reason or, oh, are they really my friend or are they just trying to get my clout? You know what I mean? Things like yeah. that. So it's like, I, you just got to be careful and ask yourself. Well, a lot of fake this. people. There's a lot of fake people in them, especially on social media. <clears throat> yeah. and you That know, are just in it for the clout and just would do anything to get that. Yeah. And shit, you look at like, even someone like 6 9 biggest in the game. He's even come out on social media and said like, he's not happy. Like, this isn't worth it. Right. Right? So it's like, you got to ask yourself, like, what do I really want here and why? <laughs> because if you're chasing it for the Clint fame and the clout and the money, it's never going to be enough. You're never going to reach a point where you have enough fame or enough clout or enough money. Right? Yeah. So um, I think that's a great place to wrap up this episode. Oh, um, yeah. So, I think so, too. Yeah. I think, I think that was a good episode overall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We're just getting the hang of this shit, guys, but we appreciate anyone that's listened through this far. Yeah, um, if you um, haven't all yet, subscribe to our YouTube so we can blow this bitch up. Yep, and it's we on Spotify, the, too. Yeah, it's on so, Spotify um, as yeah, well. Just Industry yeah. Spotlight. If that doesn't show up, look up Industry Spotlight and then put Matt at the end because it is under my name right now. It's going to be in the link, too, in, in, the, in the description. So make it's sure to true. check it out on Spotify. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dope. We out. <laughs>